Actually, I just got done watching uh, that thing you do for the first time ever. No way. I swear to God, I never watched it. I never watched it in its entirety. I little bits and pieces. Never saw right. the thing. And I grew. I didn't grow up in it. I lived in Erie for five years when that came out. I never saw it. Oh, you're kidding me! You grew up that. I went to Erie Edinburgh was... out there. I went to Edinburgh for a couple of years, and I think you were just filming when it came out. So, but we never. I don't there. think it was released. We never filmed there. We filmed in Orange County. No, but I mean, but I mean, when you were filming, they were talking about it out there, right? Like it's based in Erie, so we knew it was coming. Didn't, and they never saw it until just moments ago. Wow. So, but I mean, the hair back then was magnificent for that for that role. Was, was that your real hair for that, or? Oh yeah, back oh. then, yeah. <laughs> like I was watching that, I said, and I'm watching. I'm just watching the trailer this morning for Blue Ridge, and I was watching some of the the one quote I was watching. I have it written here. What about your father? Doesn't scream old school. It's like, yeah. How old school are you right now? I think I've become old school for sure because I got two kids and I've become my dad basically. Mm -hmm. And how's that? How does that work? In what ways? What? You know, I, I just my father was very um, faith based mm -hmm. and worried all the time, <laughs> and so. I think I'm very much the same thing. I'm worried all the time for my kids. Uh, he was a Baltimore City police officer, so it was a little different. Um, but, yeah, he's definitely old school, and I've become old school in my ways. And Justin Wise, my character, is definitely old school. It was very easy to be just like my dad. So what time so what do you – what is your, like, routine you normally like? you already have a whole lot of things done before uh, breakfast? Yeah, I, I get up um, – I eat my protein pancake, one protein pancake and uh, coffee, and then I get to the gym. I train usually for an hour. If I don't do cardio, um, I'm back home, usually taking my, my son to some camp or something during the, or, you know, I, I usually take him to the bus and then I go to the gym. But now that we're in the summer, I usually take it to a camp when I get back. I mean, is this like a normal routine for you? You have like a daily checklist. This has to all be done before. Yeah, I like getting up before everybody else and getting to the gym. That's the, that's the best way to start my day. What time do you wake up? Well, the summer's a little different. And we just got back from Hawaii, so I'm a little jet lagged. Ooh. Yeah. Um, but usually I get to the gym at 7.30 in the morning. So I'm usually up by 6. six. All right. So is that something you've always been accustomed to, having a regimen, maybe back in, even in that thing you do days? Were you still always... No. So. No, it's a little different. I mean, I, I definitely had the discipline because we had to learn how to play those instruments. Mm -hmm. And we get up, and that's the first thing I do every day. I didn't go to the gym. Um, but now I'm, my, you know, I'm 50, about to turn 55, so I, the gym is a priority. Uh, we're going to be getting back into Blue Ridge, so I'm getting back into uh, Justin Wise shape. And I got to be able to kick and throw and, and move, right? So. Yeah, I saw the pictures. saw all the pictures. One thing – I mean, how when it is when Blue Ridge does start again? How hard is it to keep that that morning schedule to get up at six thirty or whatever time and get to the gym and then get to work? And yeah, if I if I don't get to the gym before we start filming, I usually get after, right after. And I still keep my right my I eat five meals a day, um, six ounces of protein each meal, seven se seven six to seven depending on where my weight is, and. Um, you know, I go at it every day. I've got my, I got my routine now. Mm -hmm. That's my routine. What is your normal weight for a? Well, it's usually around one ninety five, but I try. I'm bringing it down to one eighty five. I'm trying to be a bit muscle mass and still, you know, sustain the cuts. With that, how, how similar, I guess, in regiments in just preparation is it between Blue Ridge and a bodybuilding show? Like, are there very similarities as far as the prep work, as far as just keep, keep maintaining a schedule? You know, last year, Michael Hearn was on the show. And I learned, I've I've known Michael for 30 some years. So I've literally followed Michael's every word. I mean, I know he followed a lot of the older, old school bodybuilders as well as I did. But that's the regiment right there. It's, it's the bodybuilding regiment. Mm -hmm. I was going to ask that question a little bit later. How does Justin Weiss take down? Michael Hearn in a in a situation. Thank God I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We, you you know, with it? Oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Yeah, we trained when he was out there. We had a blast. Um, and then, you know, he trained me uh, after the after the show. 
before the strike, when the strike, the, the screen actor strike was about to hit, I called Michael up and I said, there's a contest up the street for me in Franklin, Tennessee. And I want to compete for like a bucket list thing. And it was five and a half weeks out. Um, and Michael said, yeah, let's do it. And so every, every, every day he gave me a regiment to do. And, you know, we were on the phone back and forth and I just trained my tail off dieted like a, a pro and I, w- I won my uh, Mr. Mis- mis- over 50 Mr. Tennessee. Nice. Nice. Is that yeah. the, uh, the convention center? It was, it was in the Franklin convention center. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was yeah. there once in my life. You were? Yeah. Did a jujitsu okay. tournament down there three years ago in my first tournament down there. You're kidding me. That's yeah. awesome, man. So, and, so we and, do jujitsu in a couple first a couple episodes of Blue Ridge. Well, as far as everyone you've trained with, besides Mike, you've trained bodybuilding Mike. You probably trained a little bit of fighting with Frank Grillo, BJJ with Sean Patrick Flannery. I mean, you take a little bit from all these guys and just try to work a routine with it. Yeah. So I did that movie with Sean Patrick Flannery, and, and I became enthralled with him because he's a badass, a true badass. And uh, he loves jujitsu so much. You know, the guy was a Taekwondo champion and put all that aside and became a jujitsu champion as well. Um, And, you know, they teach me little things here and there, but my son, he's 10 years old. He trains jujitsu. And so for Blue Ridge, his instructors were instructing me out here. So (laughs) I'd watch him do some things. And then I, I, you know, I had a private session with him and we would work on, on, on getting my technique down. So I looked good for the camera. Uh, yeah. What do you train? Which, uh, which, uh, facility? It's, um, hold on. Gracie Baja. You train that regularly or do you, uh, just. No, I don't, I, I don't do classes cause I'm old and my shoulder could be dislocated at any moment. And, uh, but I do train, pri- yeah, you understand. Mm-hmm. So I train privately so that I can do it and make it look good because I'm an athlete. So I can do those things. Same thing with grill is a lot tougher than me. And, and like he, he, he throws punches every single day, you know, with his instructors, but boy, I just, I can't do that. My, it hurts me too much. It, I can't get back up, you know, the next day. Like I usually, I can't train like I can, but I do train, you know, um, boxing, Krav and uh and jujitsu for for Blue Ridge. Now, is there anybody any any activity anybody that you train with to say, nah, sorry, I can't do that. That's a little too much for me. Yeah, getting in the you know, I don't like to throw in the mat as I like to roll, but man, when you get in there and the grip and everything, it's just it's just too much. It just jars my joints. I've dislocated my shoulder like 10 years ago and it's just never been the same. So it's easy. So if someone knows that. They're just going to take my shoulder out like that. Well, at 54, I mean, what's, I mean, you don't look 54. I mean, you look, I mean, body wise, you look 30s, 20s. What feels different though at age 54? Yeah, it's a, it's a recovery time. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I'm taking this peptide BP157. Have you ever tried that yet? Heard of, I haven't tried it, no. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm trying that to have my recovery a lot faster. You know, the one thing that kills me is every time I travel. So traveling, with the luggage and all that stuff, just it wrecks me. I don't know why. I don't know if it's like dehydration or or something, but my joints, I just got back on Sunday and I went to the gym the last two days. And boy, I just wish, wish there was some kind of miracle drug to just get you back in the rhythm. So what is it's your, not, just what is your what, so what's your non-miracle drug? What's your, just your, I guess, daily habit to make sure that happens? I drink a lot of water. Hmm. Yeah. O'Hearn oh, told me when we did the bodybuilding contest to drink two two gallons of water a day, but you got to be around the toilet the entire d- day because you're just you're constantly peeing. It's it's endless. So was it fun? Was it fun doing the bodybuilding show or the whole process, or was it more challenging or some things elements that you didn't know were part of it? it? Was the, the best part was talking to Mike. Mm-hmm. You know, I got to. You know, we always we always talk about things, but we we really were focused on something together so we were like teammates and it was i mean there's, there's no better teammate than michael hearn mm-hmm. that guy is a great coach so what did you learn most from him that you still apply daily over these past 30 years over the last 30 years um that it's it's just not the the muscles it's the mind um and 
it's like the whole whole being you know the philosophy of of, of training as well as um the actual training itself uh, the mindset that you need to get into um that's that's my goal hurt now, is it hard for you to change i mean just to change up your, your routine or just change up your schedule like i said you said you're a morning person you go work out at seven o'clock filming comes in something screws it up now you got to go at seven is that hard for you to to just mix that up are you are you much a creature of habit where you've got to do it at seven or or else you're the, gonna be the only part of me that that has trouble is sleep is is regulating my sleep patterns that that's destroyed me over the years. I've had a, a really hard time with sleep, and uh, when I don't sleep well, I don't eat well, I don't function well, I don't think well, and so trying to regulate the sleep is the hardest part. Like, what are, what are some of the bad like on average? Like, how much sleep do you get or don't well, get? If I'm a, if I'm in regiment, I can get eight hours of sleep, and that's great. Um, under six is really difficult. I mean, sometimes when I'm filming, you can only, you know, you're getting, you're getting home late and, and then they change it to nighttime, but, um, that really screws me up. Every time we had to do nights on a film or something like that, it always would screw me up. And I find, it, it actually screwed me so much that I, I got addicted to Xanax. In the last 17 years, I've been addicted to Xanax and I finally got off of Xanax. Oh, how'd you get off? How's what was that like? I just I just quit, and then I just break it. For, I tapered it off, so I you know I, I just tapered it smaller amounts, smaller amounts, smaller amounts until it wasn't my system anymore. And I realized I was actually even better without it. <laughs> yeah. No, I never tried it, but what what does it do? What does how does it make you feel? How does it like over the long term? Or yeah, from Xanax. I think for most people, it just calms their nerves, but it would knock me out. It would it would help me fall asleep right away. Um, so that's why I would take Xanax. And then I just got I became a creature of habit. I had to have it in my system. I was scared to death not to have it. But now I'm okay. Did you feel better in the morning with the sleep? Or was it kind of like a, I don't know, like a hangover type sleep? I don't. It, it's it's never gave really me a hangover. Rest. Hmm? Yeah, all the other sleeping pills, they usually give me a hangover. But the, the Xanax never did. Mm -hmm. Not to say anyone should take Xanax. It's not, it's an addictive drug. It might, my, my, um, my doctor knew it was going to be an addictive drug, but we really needed to regulate my sleep because I was going nuts. Back like, did you have to take 17 years ago. Did you have to take anything else since then, or did you just go natural since? Natural. I mean, I take supplements, you know, natural supplements. Uh, what are they? You know, the ones everyone takes. What's that one? I can't remember what it is. <laughs> oh, melatonin, I think. Yeah, melatonin, that's it. Yes. My yeah, calms you down you need stuff that calms you down i do meditation uh i you know do some breathing that helps me be able to sleep a lot better and really getting a really comfortable pillow helps a lot too and training really hard that day is probably the key to me getting a good good night's sleep well, how often do you train is it a daily do you train daily or i do i go to the gym daily whether i i'm training a body part or just getting in there and doing cardio Usually, uh, even I incorporate like you know, punt, it, it, bag work. Um, you know, I try to roll. Um, just, just getting in the gym every single day just is a great discipline for me, and uh, it helps my mind. It helps me be clear and okay with whatever the day may bring me. Well, what, I say? what is your routine like? What what kind of workout do you usually like us follow? As far as what well, I bring. I know that I, you guys are, I, I know um, I change it up a lot, but right now I'm doing chest one day and then I'll go back in and do the next day back the day after that chest, uh, shoulders. And then I, I, I break them down so that I don't have a day off. So then I do arms and then I do legs and then I just repeat. And I usually do abs every single day. Um, different exercises you would usually with the bands, uh, TRX, mm -hmm. using TRX. Um, and then usually like on arm day, I'll hit the bag. If I want to be brutal to myself, I'll hit the bag on shoulder day. Um, and then I, nice. I can roll, uh, on, usually like on a leg day, um, try to keep mobile with my legs, not so much heavy weights. Um, even though I do lift heavy, 
and th that's my routine. I just do that over and over and over again. And my I, my eating is uh, I eat that one meal uh, prior to getting to the gym, and then four after that. Uh, make sure that my proteins are up. Really, just focus on my proteins and and stay away from any of the carbs that I don't need. You count your macros. Are you really strict with that, or is that just? No, no. I'm not. I just kind of look. I could just study where where I am and make sure my waters are up. Like two two gallons a day is Mike's thing, but I usually have like one and a half at the most because I hate peeing so much. And then I I start doing these Alani's when I needed to. Have you taken any? Have you drank any of those? No, I haven't. They are very. They have a lot of energy. What was it again? <laughs> Show me that it's again. Alani's. Alani. What is that? Oh, is it like a Celsius type or is it a? Yeah, it's just like that. Yep. They're very tasty and they got a lot of caffeine in them. Oh, I... no, I strict with the, uh, stick with the amino energy usually. Oh, that's good. I'll yeah. turn usually about you know, eight or nine in the morning, really. Probably isn't the best for me, but one day right. I'll, I'll probably learn the hard way, but. <laughs> also doing some research on you. I saw back in the day, you were like a GQ model, I think. Was it? Oh, my oh you know, when I when I was 19 years old, um, GQ hired me to fly to listen to this. I got offered to fly to France to do a photo shoot with the top 10 actresses of the time and French actresses, up and coming actresses. And I went out there every single day. I had a new actress. I took photos with them. <laughs> and then that was my GQ experience. Oh, nice. I mean, back then, did you focus on your uh on your fitness as well or yeah back then yeah i was i was i so when i first i was a little guy i was a 98 pound wrestler in high school so when i went to college i was training like a bodybuilder and i was studying bob paris um lee labrada um and arnold you know and i was really into bodybuilding and i trained like a bodybuilder and i got pretty big and um and people loved the way my body was built. So I could, that's why I broke into the industry, really. I, I shot with Herb Ritz and Bruce Weber, these big photographers back in the day. Um, I did Calvin Klein, Giorgio Armani. And I was I was a hardcore uh, acting coach named Roy London. I would study really, really hard. Uh, he told me that I had to work harder than anyone else because the way that I looked. And... So I, I used my body in the beginning of my career to get where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what do you have to do as far as training wise back then? How has it evolved from GQ to Blue Ridge? Well, yeah. at this age, it takes a lot more uh, stretching and uh, proper diet and, and like, you know, the peptides have helped. I have this company called blokes that I work with. Mm -hmm. um, they were always trying to figure out exactly what the best thing that I could take. I take vit you know, vitamins with them. Um, could they have a customized vitamins. That's pretty awesome. Um, so I, I just have a little package that has all the vitamins in it. So I have a bunch of different, you know, containers with different things. Um, and back then it was just, I, it was just eating a lot of food. I ate a ton of food back then. And now I don't eat as much food and regulate my food and, and do my, my training not so heavy. Back then, I just throw all the weight in the gym around. Um, now that I can throw all the weight, I don't throw all the weight around. <laughs> I use it sparingly, right? What were some of your numbers back in the day? Or You know, I think I got my bench up to like, it was almost, I think it was 415. I think I got 415. Is that 98 pounds or this was that? Oh, no, this was, I was always like 180. Wow. I was strong as a, I was a very strong kid. Damn. You said four four oh five, you said? Four fifteen. I think it was four fifteen. Maybe it was four oh five. No, you know, people know what their maxes were. And I think it was I, I think I pulled up I think I pushed up four fifteen. Well, back then, I mean, what's for you? Has gym culture changed at all from back then to now? Yeah, the phone. Everyone's on their freaking phone. <laughs> people take too long on the benches. Like they're on their phone. You know, the, I, I, you can see it. They're like trapped in their phone and they're not paying attention to their workout. And you got to wait to, you know, get get a piece of equipment. So that bothers me. That was never the case. Everyone was always talking back then, yeah, very much encouraging one another, you know, to, to get the weight up or 
you know, being part of it. Now it's like everyone's got their headphones on. No one's listening to anybody else. They're all on their phones. That's the difference. Have you done the home gym yet or? No, I haven't, but that's a good idea. I should just get a home gym and not have to worry about any of that. But then again, I won't have anybody there to spot me if I want to go heavy. So, well, how so does Mike's, that Mike's coming out here at the end of July, so we're going to train again. Yep. A workout. What is one of your day to day workouts that that gets you in shape for Blue Ridge? Well, like today, I did chest. So I did. Um, I just focused on my chest. Uh, I did. Uh, bench and then i i did a machine bench and then i did cable uh, uh flies and then a cable presses which i can go pretty heavy on those and then wide grip down wide grip up uh, upper chest and then i did pullovers with like you know 120 pounds and that's it that's what i did and then i did my abs i did trx uh, push-ups with uh bring my legs up um and then i did hanging leg raises you know i do a uh, four sets each um I go to exhaustion on each prep uh, every every set cool. and four, so four sets four sets um you know try to do 10 to 15 reps um the last one usually is like eight reps was well, there anything you can't do now with the shoulder or there's anything that's totally off limits um I just feel it, but it's strong as can be. Did you do any PT work with that, or is it just totally? No, unless I do something like you know, grappling. It's always tough when I roll on it, or or someone yanks it, like someone yanking it out. This is my biggest fear. <laughs> that happened to me. Did you stay in California for a while, or? I was there for thirty years, over thirty years. So, so my son uh, had to go into schools, and we realized like. We needed to get out of California and find a good school for him. And, and my wife's from Nashville, Tennessee. And we we came out here, visited some schools. And by the time we left, we were like, we got to buy a house. And we found a great home. Um, I'm, I, had to, I have nothing but farm around me with horses. And it's just awesome. I love it. Driving along, it's all green. I was driving to the gym today, and two bucks ran out in front of me. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's just like watching these majestic creatures, you know, going across the road. Everyone's stopping, just watching these guys. It's amazing. I'm living in Phoenix now. I'm waiting for my first rattlesnake sighting. I haven't seen one. Oh, right. yeah. Oh, oh. That's, I don't want it. I'm just like so no. far so good. Is it like 117 degrees there? It was 118 on Monday. Or it's, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You get everything done by 10 o'clock and you're okay. Right, it's right. When it comes to filming on location, how do you keep that routine going? Well, first off, I have a great uh, team out there where, for Blue Ridge. Uh, they found gyms for me. Um, I had a gym in where I stayed, and then I had a gym gym from three minutes from where I was staying. So, you know, that's it. No commute time, going home, working out, going right back, showering, going to bed. So, or wake up, work out, you know, get to the, get to the set, um, and – we have showers at this at the at this uh, our location our studio. Um, that or I don't do I don't go so hard that I'm sweating so bad that I have to you know take a shower. So well, are you tight? Are you typecast now? No. As the athletic as the athletic uh, looking uh, cop badass, can you play like the heavy guy going forward or? Yeah, you know I think I'm going to be the lead. I'm just going to be a leading man from now now on. I think that I started out, everyone saw me as a leading man, and then I fell into a lot of character work. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be the best actor I possibly could, but I, I, at this age and where I am, I just want to be a leading man. I love um, taking the lead and guiding people and and bringing my values and principles to everything that I do. Well, so the staying fit, at least, does it help you creatively? Does it help you just focus better, keep your, keep your mind on, I yeah. guess, on character in – on point yeah I, I think the you know one thing about training it relieves all this exterior anxiety that i used to have when i train hard i i can take on anything during the day with my with my mind so my body sets my mind um i get embodied and then i'm calmer my brain functions better wow 
how does it work for the long hours when the filming does go from morning to night? Does it do you yes, fatigue like you fatigue normally, or is it, or can you last a little bit longer and just? Yeah, I think I think that you know doing cardio and um, and, and and boxing it, it helps you know be able to to move with everything um, and just breathing you know just being in your breath gives you a little bit more longevity no matter what you're shooting nights or I mean they catch up to you no matter what but. And if you're not in that, if I'm not in the gym, I'm a mess. That's, that's the only problem is I got to get to the gym, you know, and I try to avoid injury because injuries, injuries can just take you completely out. Has that know. ever happened to you or? Yeah. I mean, I just dislo dislocated my shoulder and I thought the world had ended. This horrible thing. I was playing base. I was playing baseball with the Hollywood all-stars and I hit a, a inside the park home run and the catcher came down on my shoulder as I slid across home plate and just destroyed my shoulder, dislocated it and broke it. And, and so I, I just, I did rehab on it and was fine. I still, I can't do certain things. And when I, when I was posing in my, my, um, my contest, you could just, I could actually see it for the first time because I leaned myself out so much that my shoulder hasn't rounded on this side from that injury. And, you know, I couldn't get my lat out when I stuck my lat. So I couldn't get my lat out. And it was, Mike was trying to help me. It was just like, that's just not going to happen because it's just, you never rehabbed it properly. So have you ever proposing? Yeah. You hold, a, you hold a grudge against that Hollywood all-star or? You know, his name was Mark Crescia. He was a, he was a, he was a catcher for the Dodgers. Huh. And um, he just said that I came around third base so hard that his instincts just took over and he became a professional catcher and he came down, you know, to block the plate and he came down on my shoulder and he called me. He was felt really bad about it, but you know what he said when he called, he goes, I still think you were out. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I wasn't out. I was safe. Obviously my arm was dangling over home plate. Well, how long was that recovery process? Well, you know, it, it took, it took about eight weeks. I had a great um, physical therapist and we just trained it really hard, all the band work that we did. Um, but, you know, at the time that the surgeon, he was like, you're going to be fine. You're going to be do everything. You're just not going to be able to reach back and grab a seatbelt. Um, but I didn't think about like fight sequences. Um, and it took me a while, but I, I, I wind up filming this movie called Roadhouse. I did the sequel to Row House way before um, anyone else did. Jake Gyllenhaal did his, um, but I did it a long time ago. But and I did that film for that very reason to test my shoulder, um, to get back into the gym, to box, and to uh, I did a lot of Krav Maga, um, and to see if I could pull it off. And I did. I was I was able to do all the fight sequences that we had. Well, for you now, what's an actor's best workout or best exercise that you got to get? You Got to have in your program at all times. Well, first off, an actor needs to be embodied. So they really de do need to know what their instrument is all about, like a dancer would. Um, they need to know what their body can do because their body has to be in tune with their performance. So that's one thing. But for, for me, being this character, uh, Justin Wise, you know, I got to be able to take care of business. And you need to know that I can take care of business. So that's why I put more weight on. So that you look at me, you know he's imposing. Um, he's got muscle, you know, he's strong um, and he's going to take care of business. So did you put on extra weight for this role? Yeah, I, I put on additional 15, 20 pounds of muscle. Now, how was the process for that? How did you do, what was, was it, how long did it take to put that? That's a lot of weight for. Yeah, I just, I just increased my, um, the weights and, you know, did lower reps. Uh, but really just, just going back to bodybuilding just to look, you know, the, Sculpt it here or there, chest out a little bit more, bring out the back. Um, I had a great uh, trainer back. He didn't train me for Blue Ridge. Uh, Eric the trainer. Do you remember Eric the trainer? Yeah. Yeah. So I used to work out with Eric. He used to train me. Mm -hmm. um, so he would always talk about like wide, narrow waist, wide, narrow waist. Of course, we never did abs. Eric never trained abs. <laughs> but I train abs every day now. So to do that, I mean, did you need a team for this at this point, or did you do, were you able to do it on your own? 
as far well, as I definitely, the, I don't the, like, the training and everything just to pack on well, good uh, muscle. I think I do have a team. I, my team would be Michael. He's uh he's always there for me anytime I need any instructions. Um, and then the people from blokes, uh, it's a great blokes.com go. Uh, what's, I can't remember what the thing is, but it's uh, blokes. It's like a place where it's like hymns. I go, they have all the supplements that I need and, and anything like the BP one, five, one, five, seven, I think that's what it's called. Like the peptides. Um, and that's helped me a great deal. So I, that's my team. Mm -hmm. Bad. And as far as, all the fight scenes for Blue Ridge. So I have a couple of them in the trailer. How much work is involved? How much actual work is involved with that? Not choreography, like physical. Like how much recovery do you need afterwards for that? I got a great uh, stunt guy. Uh, Jared is phenomenal. Uh, and then my stunt coordinator, he's, he's, he, we put everything in line and they, they know what I can do and they know what I can't. Um, and so the way we do it is, Whoever I'm having the fight scene with, when the camera's on me, I'm in there, right? But when we don't want two actors going at the same time because we can't afford any injuries. So Jared will step in there and go at, go off of my uh, my other actor. So, mm -hmm. you know, we'll get the court, the fight fights down before that. We And we, we worked on some things before, some of the stuff that we wanted to incorporate with jujitsu. You'll love some of the stuff that we've been able to do. Um, and you know, it's film, it's not real, but you could, you know, you get the gist of it. Um, even like we have a big episode, uh, episode three is about wrestling. So we incorporated a lot of the wrestling maneuvers that wrestlers would do. So when you see the fight in the, in that scene, you know, Justin's actually doing some wrestling moves that aren't real, but they, it feels it entertains you and makes you, you know, get into the episode. So we incorporate a little bit with, with every, um, new scenario new new situation so we incorporate new new techniques and we do everything with krav maga jiu-jitsu boxing um fun when does blue ridge come out blue ridge comes out uh july 28th 9 p.m on insp east coast that time. would be why should everyone be watching blue ridge well, it's a family uh, family show, so I can watch the show with my ten year old. He's in he's enthralled throughout the whole thing. He doesn't have to leave the room for any situations, um, and I can watch it with my eighty five year old father and my wife right by my side, and we can all enjoy it. So it's a family family fun, entertaining you know piece. And one thing we really want to do is have fun for making it as well as for people watching it. Um, I find myself getting involved with the other characters that are in the, in the series when I watch it. Um, Justin is a great hero for everyone to, to follow my character, Justin. Um, and I get to play my dad, you know, I get to play my father. So it's been the greatest experience for me. And I, I think that everyone who made it um, has really strong morals and principles and values. And I think it comes across really well. Um, it's an entertaining piece. And people just have really loved the show. More people need to see it. Is this one of the more fun fun shows you've done, you've done in a long time or ever? Well, there was a there was a movie I did that you just watched called That Thing You Do. So oh, yeah. I had a ton of fun m making That Thing You Do. And it had a lot to do with the people that were at the top of the food chain. And the same thing with Blue Ridge. The people at the top, Gary Wheeler, um, Doug Butts, they're great people and just love making this series as much as I love making that thing you do. When's the last time you watched it? That thing you do? Yeah. You know, I we tried to watch it with my three year old, a uh, little girl, mm -hmm. and uh, she she couldn't she couldn't follow it. it you know, it was it was interesting because I thought she would love the music and all that, but it's not all the music. You got to get through the characters and stuff like that, and she's just not there yet. So we tried to watch it with her. Um, that let her see that you know I play it. I played music one time in my life. Uh, she loves to play the uh, the piano, so hopefully she'll be a musician in the family. Now, if the Wonders were a twenty twenty four band, what would they be like? You know, there's a line in the movie. I keep going back to the Herdsman. Do you remember that? There's a line, and it goes, "It." So my character Jimmy has a band after the wonders called Jimmy and the herdsmen. And he wins all kinds of uh, awards with it and gets uh, like 
platinum records and stuff like that. So he's very successful as Jimmy and the Herdsman. So I think he would be Jimmy and the Herdsman. <laughs> like he's like Richard Marks, you know. Yeah. Oh, the, one question I did, the one question I did not ask though was, uh, what is your nutrition like? What is your go-to meal? What is your? Do you have a rest? Do you have a? Do you have a go-to meal? I, I meal prep. I meal prep, but I do do one thing that I've, I've, I've really gotten very good at. I have an egg white protein pancake every morning. I put it in the microwave so I don't have to touch the stove early in the morning. And I zap it for like two minutes and 45 seconds. I got it down where that thing is just right there on my plate. I eat that. I pour uh, sugar-free syrup on it. And it gets me going for the day. If you do meal prep, how does your family like? They, how they, do they, they uh... hate when I meal prep with fish because the house smells like fish. Uh... But if I do chicken, they're okay with it. <laughs> but they eat their own meals. They eat their own. Yeah, they'll go off and have their meals. And, you know, sometimes if, if I'm not – getting ready for a show or something I'll, I'll i'll eat out with them and i can you know you can get six ounces of protein anywhere you go so yeah. i know it's, I'm it's that's very, the very tricky simple. part and i've been lucky enough to have a family who understands you know daddy's got to look a certain way and at this age i can't really falter too much like we were in hawaii i all i did was eat poke it was everywhere so i had fresh ahi and salmon poke everywhere i went and they could eat you know tacos or whatever so bottom line is all you have to do really is just point to the TV and say, that's why I have to meal prep. Exactly. All that's right. exactly what I tell everyone. So everyone, on wonders, that everyone wonders why they can't be disciplined enough to stay on the routine that I stay on. But I do this for a living. So I have to look this way. So I have to get a TV show now just to justify my meal that's prep. That's exactly right. Or all you right. can come on Blue Ridge. <laughs> Easier said. <laughs>